Hello and welcome. In this video I will show you how to create a sheet list or a drawing list in Revit 2013 which looks familiar to this one created manually in Microsoft Excel. I'll jump to Revit and I'll open the VIA template. For those of you who don't have access to it you need to be aware of that our sheets are organized using view types so that means that we already uh, created a lot of sheets, but without any content. Um, they're just example sheets. But for this demonstration, um, it works out well, because I can create the drawing list before actually starting modeling. So I'll go to my schedules, I'll create a sheet list. And normally, I would advise you to add all of the available fields, take a look at them, and consider which one of them um, could be useful. Then go back, remove them, and um, then add them individually. In this case I'll add the view type, the view number, the view name, the issue date, and probably also like the paper size. There might be fields which are not available and we'll take a look at that later. First of all, I'll finish this and I might want to set up the um, sorting of it so it's um, sorting and giving a header to each one uh, which um, is in a different view type. So now it looks something like this and I might want to expand some of them a little bit and I might want to give some of these a name, I could call it um, ground floor. I could call the elevation um, elevation. They're all of them on the same sheet. And uh, section AA, for instance. You notice that uh, under paper size we don't get the format. And um, that's very important to know that even though actually the information is on the different sheets. Um, and also if we go to them, they have a width and a height. Revit are not able to uh, write that into our sheet list. So that needs to be filled out manually. And of course there's a risk of mistake then, but um, this could be an A4, this could be an A2, A and this could be an A1, um, and so on. And then you need to fill them in uh, manually. We would also like um, the measurements to be available. And again, even though they are often uh, stated, if I drag in a 1 to 100 drawing, um, it will have a scale here that can be written out in title box or, uh, or cap caption box, I think it's called. Then we need to set it up a little bit different. And that means that we need to create a parameter and I'll do that by going to manage, I'll create a project parameter, add one, and I'll call it measurement, and uh, I'll make it a general parameter, and that should just be um, text, even though it might be, be numbers, but uh, then it can contain both, and that should be applied for our sheets. Okay. When that's being done, you can go back to your fields, and now you should have a parameter in here that's called measurements that we can add to our list. And in here again, you might want to fill this in and say um, that the plans, they are 1 to 100, elevations might be the same, and uh, you have a section called 1 to uh, 20 or 50. Let's do it like this. So this was the very uh, basic. Uh, of course you can uh, start changing um, the titles if you're not happy with these ones. We could call this overview. We could call this um, drawing number and so on and so on. We don't need to use the default names. We can change them afterwards. The next small step I'll show you is how you can add the different um, 
stakeholders or um, or trades within this project um, on the third semester we are sending out to um, maybe the municipality plus another trade and you might want to add a row where you can check mark if this and this drawing should be sent to the authority and both the authority and, and a certain trade and again I would do that by going to um, my project parameters I'll add one and I will call it um, we can call it trade one again I'll make it a general parameter I'll make it a text sorry I'll make it a yes no and um, I'll add it to my sheet here we have it okay and let's add a new one trade two the same way yes no general sheet okay and let's add one for the authority again yes no general and sheet okay and then we can go back to our fields and we should have then the one called authority we should have the one called trade one and two and we're adding them and we get another two rounds and you can say the authority this needs this and this and this drawings the trade only needs uh, this and this but also maybe something down here and so on um, that's the idea of it the very last thing I'll show you is how to deal with uh, revisions <coughs> that's not, not something you'll deal with um, that much during school but uh, it's a very important uh, tool when um, being a professional and dealing with projects being changed constantly so let's say that you have a nice elevation drawing here we'll imagine it's here and we um, talk to our contractor and someone wants to change a part of it and that means that we um, we're marking a small area on the drawing, uh, making a revision cloud. We um, needed to add that to a certain sequence. That's very important. Um, and the sequence can be changed if you go to views and revisions. And you can change if they should be numeric or alphabetic. We'll change it to alphabetic. And um, we can even go in and tag see here tag by category and tag uh, this revision and it should have a revision number A furthermore we could go back to our sheet list and we could add a few fields that has to do with uh, revisions and revision dates and I'll add them and say that might want to move this up a little bit um, like this and we might want to move this up as well like this okay and now we notice that we have our current version A here and um, possibility of uh, typing in a revision date when dealing with revisions we would also like to have a title box um, which tells um, what revision we are looking at um, instead of demonstrating this I'll advise you to take a look at the default template default metric that comes together with the installation of um, Revit and take a look at the sheet created by Autodesk where you'll see a good example of um, a different design of a title box but also with a revision uh, schedule uh, contained a revision number, a description and a revision date here as well so this could be a small challenge trying to modify the via template or your current uh, title box and see if you can include revisions as well okay I hope this uh, convinced you that even though we need to type in something manually uh, there's a large benefit of using 
the sheet list created by Revit instead of having to uh, do and type in everything manually directly in an Excel sheet. If for some reason you would like this to be uh, in an Excel sheet, of course you have the options of exporting to uh, Excel and that's uh, being done by making a report and then um, making a schedule and then um, exporting it to a txt file that can be read into Microsoft Excel. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for listening and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.